Today I'm going to read a story called George's Marvelous Medicine. Going shopping in the village, George's mother said to George on Saturday morning. So be a good boy and don't get up to mischief. This was a silly thing to say to a small boy. At any time, it immediately made him wonder what sort of mischief he might get up to. And don't forget to give Grandma her medicine at eleven o'clock, the mother said. Then, out she went. Closing the back door behind her, Grandma, who was dozing in her chair by the window, opened one wicked little eye and said, "Now you heard what your mother said, George. Don't forget my medicine." No, Grandma, George said, and just try to behave yourself for once while she's away. Yes, Grandma, George said. George was bored to tears. He didn't have a brother or sister. His father was a farmer, and the farm they lived on was miles away from anywhere. So there were never any children to play with. He was tired of staring at pigs and and hens and cows and sheep. He was especially tired to have to live in the same house that grizzly old granny of a grandma most after her all by himself、It、was hardly the most exciting way to spend a Saturday morning. You can make me a nice cup of tea for a start, Grandma said to George. That keep you off of mischief for a few minutes. Yes, Grandma. George couldn't help disliking Grandma. She was a selfish, grumpy old woman. She had pale brown teeth and a small puckered up mouth like a dog's bottom. How much sugar in your tea today, Grandma? George asked her. One spoon, she said, and no milk. Most grandmothers are lovely, kind, helpful old ladies, but not this one. She spent all day and every day sitting in her chair by the window, and she was always complaining, growling, grouching, grumbling, grippling about something or other. Never once, even on her best days, she smiled at George and said, "Well, how are you this morning, George?" Or Why don't you? I have a game of sticks and ladders. Or how was school today? She didn't seem to care about other people, only about herself. She was a miserable old grouch. George went to went into the kitchen and made out Grandma a cup of tea with a tea bag. He put one spoon of sugar in it and no milk. He stirred the sugar well and carried the cup into the living room. Grandma sipped the tea. It's not sweet enough, she said. Put more sugar in. George took the cup back to the kitchen and added another spoonful of sugar. He stirred it again and carried it carefully into Grandma. Where's the saucer? She said. I won't have a cup without a saucer. George fetched her a saucer. What about a teaspoon, tea, teaspoon, if you please? I've stirred it for you, Grandma. I've stirred it well. I'll stir in my own tea. Thank you very much. She said. She said. Fetch me a teaspoon. George fetched. Fetched her a teaspoon. When George's mother or father were home, Grandma never ordered George, George, about like this. It was only when she had him on her own that she began treating her badly. You know what's the matter with you? The old woman said, staring at George over the rim of the teacup with those bright, wicked little eyes. You're going too fast. 
boys who grow too fast become they stupid and lazy. But I can't help if I'm growing fast, Grandma, George said. Of course you can, she snapped. Growing is a nasty childish habit. But we have to grow, Grandma. If we didn't grow, we'd never be grown-ups. Rubbish, boy, rubbish, she said. Look at me. Am I growing? Certainly not. But you did once, Grandma. Oh, very little, the old woman answered. I gave growing up when I was extremely small, along with all the other nasty childish habits like laziness and disobedience and greed and sloppiness and untidiness and stupidity. You haven't given up any of these things, have you? I'm only a little boy, Grandma. You're eight years old, she snorted. That's old enough to know better. If you don't stop growing soon, it'll be too late. Too late for what, Grandma? It's ridiculous, she went on. You're nearly as tall as me already. George took a good look at Grandma. She certainly was a very tiny person. Her legs were so short, she had to leave a stood for to pull her feet on, and her head only came halfway up the back of the armchair. Daddy says it's fine for a man to be tall, George said. Don't listen to your daddy, Grandma said. Sorry. Ha but how do I stop myself growing, George asked her. Eat less chocolate, Grandma said. Does chocolate make you grow? It makes you grow the wrong way, she snapped. Up instead of down. Grandma stepped some tea but never took her eyes from the little boy who stood before her. The old hag grinned, showing those brown teeth. Sometimes, if you're lucky, she said, you'd better get a beetle inside the stem of a stick of celery. That's what I like. Grandma, how could you? You find all sorts of nice things in sticks of raw celery. You find all sorts of nice things in sticks of raw celery, the old woman went on. Sometimes it's earwigs. I don't want to hear about it, cried George. A big fat earwig is very tasty, Grandma said, licking her lips. But you've got to be very quick, my dear. When you put one of those in your mouth, it has a pair of short nippers on its back. Chop, chop, before it bites you. Jot started heading towards the door. He wanted to get as far away as possible from this filthy old woman. You're trying to get away from me, aren't you? She said, pointing a finger straight at George's face. You're trying to get away from Grandma. Little George stood by the door, staring at the old hag in the chair. She stared back at him. Could it be George wondered that she was a witch? He had always thought witches were only in fairy tales, but now he was not so sure. Come closer to me, little boy, she said beckoning to him with a horny finger. Come closer to me and I will tell you secrets. George didn't move. Grandma didn't move either. I know I had, I, I know I'd write many secrets, she said, and suddenly she smiled. It was an icy thin smile, the kind a snake might make just before it bites you. Come over here to Grandma, she'll, she'll whisper. Secret to you, George took a step backwards, edging closer to the door. 
You mustn't be afraid of your old grandma, she said, smiling the icy smile. George took another step backwards. Some of us, she said, and all at once she was leaning forward in her chair and whispering in a throaty sort of voice George had never heard her use before. Some of us, she said, have magic powers that can twist the creatures out of this earth into wondrous shapes. A tingle of electricity flashed down the length of George's spine. He began to feel frightened. Some of us, the old woman went on, have fire on our tongues and sparks in our bellies and whispery in the tips of our fingers. Some of us know that secrets would make your hair stand straight up on the end and your eyes pop out of their sockets. George wanted to run away, but his feet seemed stuck on the floor. We know how to make your nails drop off and teeth grow out of your fingers instead. George began to tremble. It was her face that frightened him most of all. The frosty smile, the brilliant, unblinking eyes. We know how to wake you up in the morning with a long tail coming from behind you. Grandma, he cried, stop. We know secrets, my dear, about dark places where dark things live and scratch and, and slither all over each other. George made a dive for the, for the door. It doesn't matter how far we went, he heard her say. You won't ever get away. George ran into the kitchen, slamming the door behind him.